Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Sparks, aka Big Beard. So, uh, I've been trying to rack my brain on what kind of videos I should do, what everybody might want to see. Um, and comment below on this one. I have, I want to do, I've been thinking about doing a Ardbeg blind tasting. I have seven different releases of Ardbeg. Um, and I, I would like to, oof, that's, I would like to, I think it'd be fun just to kind of do, taste all of them blind and see how they come out uh, as far as who wins. Uh, I, I was thinking about doing this one blind, but I've done Ardbeg and Lagavulin and Lafroig in blind tastings before. And I actually, I think I picked them, picked them correctly. So since I've had so much Ardbeg, Lafroig, and Lagavulin, and all the heavily peated Scotch whiskeys from Isla, since I've had so many in the past, it's kind of hard for me to get confused from brand to brand. Now, if I was to try to pick different Lafroigs from each other, that would be a little bit harder. Same with Ardbeg, same with Lagavulin. So, but these two, Already right now, the uh, Lafroy is, man, these glasses look dirty as shit. Somebody needs to clean these glasses. Yeah, it's still got a mouth print on it. What the heck, Bonnie? Anyway, so I just wanted to do a quick comparison. I know I've done these, and these are the both, I think these are both the original bottles that I've had, so I'll have to look back in my... I'll put a, a link up at the top, a little uh, two old videos to these two reviews from years past. You'll be able to see how short my beard was. But I think I've had these bottles for at least two years apiece, minimum. So we got Lafroy Lore on my left, bot bottled at 48% alcohol. And we have Ardbeg Kelpie on my right. And I believe the, the Kelpie was a committee release. Um, I don't, well, I think it was a committee release at the time. Um, yeah, I think the lore is a regular release, or at least it's still on the shelf. I haven't seen any Kelpie in a while, so. Oh, well, I just wanted to compare them, give my thoughts, and uh, I wanted to use the Murray method to taste these back and forth and see how well it works. So, automatically, they do have similar noses, but Ardbeg has a, uh, a sweeter presence, whereas the Lafroig is more pungent, seaweedy, and medicinal. So, there are, I probably would have got this one wrong. I would have probably picked Ardbeg having the more seaweedy. Uh, nose to it hmm let's see how they taste Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 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 <laughs> so the Ardbeg has a, I mean, it is smoky, punchy, pungent, medicinal. But there's some sweetness behind it, and I think it's because they use a lot of sherry barrels in their maturation. Now, this one, version casts made from oak grown filled black seed. I think those are tasting notes. What's wrong, Bonnie? Hmm. But anyway, there is some sweetness to it that I don't know if I remember 
tasting it in the past. What's wrong, Brian? Let me get my beer. Um, but it's actually, I mean, I think it's quite nice. It's very maritime, and it gives you images of the coast of Scotland, maybe a windswept sea spray, and all that good stuff. So, when you're doing the Murray method, and there aren't, as far as I know, there aren't any videos of him doing it. So, like I said, this is all my memory, just pulling it up, bastardizing his his technique. So, when you do the Murray method, and I know I'm probably going to get a lot of cross looks at this one, you're supposed to take a small sip, swish it in your mouth from the new whiskey, spit it out, and then taste the new whiskey. So, you're basically using the new whiskey as a cleaning agent to get rid of the flavors of the old one. So, with that said, we'll go ahead and taste this one. Mmm. So it's surprising as pungent and seaweed and salty. I really don't, it's not as smoky as I remembered it. And it might just be my taste buds changing because they will change over time. I get a little bit of the smoke, but it's not like the campfire smoke that you normally get. And it, more than likely it's because I'm not a beginner at peated whiskey, but there's some sweetness in this one as well. Now you gotta dig deep for it, and I don't recommend uh, any beginner, anyone who's never had peated, peated scotch to go out and buy a Ardbeg Kelpie or a Laphroaig Lore and try to jump off into it head first because you will drown in the deep end. So I'm gonna give this one another taste. So I'm hoping my my cork hasn't I haven't I haven't cracked into this one in a while. But there is some sweetness there, but it's not this one's more like a a fruity sweetness and this one's more like I can't I can't place it. There is a sweetness there, but maybe it's like a chocolate type sweetness instead of a fruit sweetness, so like a, an actual sugar sweetness instead of uh, fruitiness. Now, let, me, let me try this one again. I got a swish and rinse. So, and I think I know why I said this before in the past. I think the reason why Jim Murray probably doesn't doesn't record or let anyone record these tastings is because you've got him and 50 other people or whatever all freaking spitting whiskey out into spittoons. I mean, it's not it's not attractive. I mean, it's not sexy. It's not elegant. It's not any of that. It's just it's a little gross. <laughs> uh, but I do get the point if you're going to be tasting, and I've said this before as well, if you're going to be tasting five or more whiskeys in a short period of time, and you're going to be tasting a lot of it, then you're definitely going to want to spit a little bit. Yeah.
maybe it's like uh it's almost like some some fresh baked cookies on the back end the sweetness that i'm getting you still have the the pungent the peaty the medicinal flavors but then there's a an underlying sweetness that creeps up that if you're not looking for it you might miss it because of all that pungent punchy stuff on the front but it's really got this creamy sweet underlying tone to it that is in my opinion it's quite enjoyable but and i really don't know sitting here just tasting these in this manner i'm not sure if i can actually pick a winner because they're both they're both really good and i mean they're both 100 plus dollar bottles of scotch they both have a similar characteristic but they're two completely different whiskeys i got a little bit left in this one i'm gonna try to swish a little bit well we'll just see how it goes so and it wasn't very much literally enough where i can still talk So, I know this is it's kind of gross, but anyway, out of these two, and I know a lot of people think that Ardbeg is the, the big punch you in the mouth as far as more distinct peaty flavors over Laphroaig. I would say Laphroaig has more of a sea time, well, a, a sea salt maritime very seaweedy reminds you of like standing on the shores of Scotland uh, and like in the middle of a rainstorm or a, a, a coastal storm or whatever it has that presence but there's still a underlying sweetness to it just it's very faint now the art bag it has that as well but it has more of a creamy cookie type uh, presence that's also on the back end it's it's not up front you're gonna get the uh, the peat and all of that goodness up front but then that sweetness is gonna follow through very low to the ground all in all I mean if you're into peated scotch and you really like it these two should be on your shelf. Share them with people as often as you can. Mainly, <laughs> I like sharing these whiskeys with people just to see the look on their face. And I always tell them first, don't smell it. Because most people, the first thing they do is go in to smell. Go in to smell and that just kind of ruins it for them. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna serve this up to somebody, Tell them don't smell it first just take a sip like you would on your first sip of coffee and then enjoy it that way and then smell it because no more normally if they go in too deep and it's a high proof whiskey it's just going to blow their, their it's going to blow their senses out and they're not going to be able to enjoy it but yeah i don't i didn't really start this video to do a comparison to pick a better because i think they're both great whiskeys um I just wanted to give my opinion of both and say hey if you're if you're in that if you're in that vein if you like the peated scotch these two would be two great additions to your collection so that's all i got they're good whiskeys i enjoy them i mean i i like them in the winter time better now uh, it's not really a summertime drink here in texas it's 95 degrees outside right now it's not something that I would want to drink in the summertime. Uh, I have for about three years straight. That's all I. That's all I drink. So, uh, but yeah, I would. I prefer these in the winter time when it gets cold. They feel much better sitting next to a campfire. But anyway, that's all I got. Check the description below. Thanks to all the new patrons. Thanks to all my old patrons who are not around anymore, for whatever reason. I want to thank everybody for that. Thanks to the new guys. I got something coming up that I'm working on. Uh, for July for my patrons so if you're not a patron you're missing out so you will 
the I got something coming up soon uh, and I'm thinking it might have to do with uh, these four bottles up here on this top shelf on this end so that's part of it oh and I'll, I'll give you all a quick sneak peek if you stuck her if you stuck around this long this is a 375 so we'll just hide that everybody got a sneak peek so that'll be coming in July uh, get back to the old ways not really making any more money but I need to get everybody involved so don't forget to check out the bearded idiots like always drink some whiskey share with your friends and family be safe don't drink and drive take care of yourself we'll see you next time